Hey guys, let's take a look at two things today. The first is called subscripted variables. This is the kind of stuff that makes algebra look very complicated, but it's basically just a way of putting things. In other words, if you look at this equation, this is system, system equations. And if you look, we have n, by the way, this is red, n sub n and then n sub d. They're subscripted variables. Often in uh, math uh, problems, we'll do an n with a sub n and an n sub d based on, uh, there'll be a question, it'll say the number of um, whatevers and then the number of these and they're different letters. In other words, this could be something like the number of nickels plus the number of dimes was 40. In other words, there were 40 dimes and nickels in a pile. And the number of nickels, by the way, they're five cents a piece, right? And the number of dimes, which are also five cents, or excuse me, they're 10 cents a piece, uh, they added up to 250 cents or $2.50. How many of each kind were there? And at this point, this is the genius of Saxon. They are giving you both equations to piddle with right now. And once you get used to solving those, then he'll get to a point where he goes, okay, there are 26 nickels and dimes in a pile that added up to $3.85. How many of each kind were there? Well, it's at that point that you will come up with your own subscripted variables, okay? And we'll talk about more about that in a few, uh, in a, well, a few days, about when, what, there's a simpler way to look at subscripted variables, but let's look at them and solve them and don't be intimidated by them. And you can treat these just like any other uh, system you've, you've ever done. Remember how we used to do these? We'd go, oh, you know, oh, x plus 2y equals 13, and then 3x minus 7y equals 40, or whatever. You would look at this and you'd go, oh, uh, I'm gonna use substitution. Okay, I'm moving this over and I'm gonna substitute. Or maybe you did like this. You went, uh, oh, I'm gonna eliminate these by multiplying this by you know, three, and then this by five, and then same exact thing. Don't let this fool you. This is one variable, that's another one. This is the same as that variable, that's the same as that one. No big deal. Don't let it intimidate you, okay? You're gonna treat this exactly like you would any other couple of variables. Well, <clears throat> what you can do is, you can use substitution if you want. You can plop this over there and substitute, or you could just say, I'm gonna multiply the entire top, top by five, then by five, then by five, then I'll subtract the five in from this five in. I mean, either way is fine, whatever. Let's just substitute since it might be a little easier. So the n sub n equals, and that gets plopped over there. So that's gonna be 40 minus n sub d. So that's our new you know, value for n sub n. So let's stick it right here, right? So instead of writing this equation with this with n sub n, we'll write this in place of that, okay? So I'm just gonna pull this down a little farther. So that's gonna be five times n sub n, which is 40 minus n sub d, we good? Okay, plus 10 n sub d equals 250. And just distribute, five times 40, five times four is 20, so five times 40 is 200, minus five times n sub d plus 10 times n sub d, it's fun to say n sub d, all right, so this, that is gonna be five, negative five plus 10 is five. I'm moving this over to the right, 250 minus 200 is 50. So n sub d is equal to 10, all right? Well, if that's equal to 10, go back to this, one of these, any, either one of these original equations, and n sub d is 10, so n sub n is gonna be, you know, 40 minus 10, so n, sub n equals 30, and there you go. Okay, follow us to it. You treat this just like you would X's and Y's, same old thing, all right? Here's another one, pause and copy this down. Okay, this is basically, you don't, and again, you don't need to worry about this yet, but eventually we're gonna be using these. Notice how many equations are there, look at it, how many equations are there? There's four, right, okay. Eventually, these, these are going to be done by you. You will be coming up with four equations. And they will say something like, a train left Boston at 2 p.m. at 80 miles an hour. Two hours later, a train left Chicago 
And then three hours later, the trains crashed into each other and hurled into the atmosphere the debris from the, you know, whatever. And you'll be expected to look at that little paragraph and come up with four equations on your own. All right. So let's look at what this might be. This isn't necessary, but it's a good uh, it's a good way of getting into this and not just going. You know, I'm just going to blindly do this, which is actually okay. You have four equations. You're going to use these to solve for every single unknown thing. And this, let's read this. R sub m times T sub m plus R sub w times T sub w is 260. R sub m is 40. R sub w is 60. T sub m plus T sub w is 5. Let me translate this for you, okay? You don't have to know this, but it's helpful. Well, let's go to, the, to the, a smaller one here first. Let's say uh, this is a rate. R stands for rate, which is speed. The rate of the, well, what's an animal that homeschoolers have as pets? A mongoose. The rate of a mongoose is 40 miles an hour. In other words, the, in, the, in the paragraph, they'll tell you, the mongoose ran, or traveled at 40 miles per hour. The walrus traveled at 60 miles an hour. It's a fast walrus. Rate, speed. The time of the mongoose plus the time of the walrus was five hours. In other words, they'll say, uh, the walrus and the mongoose traveled a total of five hours between them. And they'll also say this, the rate and the time multiplied by each other is the distance. So they'll say rate times time is distance. They'll say the distance of the mongoose plus the distance of the walrus was 260 miles. They, they traveled 260 miles you know, total between both of them. And that's what they'll tell you. And they'll say, find the rate of how fast the mongoose went and how fast the walrus went. <clears throat> now, that's the, what you're going to do. But at this point, all you're going to do is just substitute. What you're going to do is, you're going to take this big equation, and you're going to ram into that equation all this gobbledygook over here and stick it in there and solve. Okay? So let's do it. So the uh, rate of the mongoose is 40. Let's just stick it right there. That says the rate of the mongoose right there. Forget that, I'm putting a 40. The time of the mongoose, I don't know yet. Let's just stick at the time of the mongoose, all right? The rate of the walrus, we know over here is 60, all right? The time of the walrus, we don't know. Well, that's gonna be 260, okay? Now I have a question for you. Look at that purple equation. Can you solve that equation? You can't, can you? You've got one unknown and another unknown. That's like saying, oh, I'm going to solve this equation. Mm, no, you're not, definitively. You, you, have to, I mean, you have to have two equations. So we need an equation that just has one uh, term in it, one kind of, we just need time of, of the mongoose or time of the walrus. Well, look at this. We can figure out what just the time of the mongoose is, right? We can go time of the mongoose, let's solve that by plopping this over there. That's equal to five minus the time of the walrus. So instead of writing <coughs> time of the mongoose here, we can write five minus time of the walrus. Of course, you could do the same thing, you could do the opposite way as well. In other words, we could go like this. We could say, okay, I'm taking this equation, I'm going the time of the walrus, I'm, I'm leaving that there. Now I'm moving this over here. The time of the walrus is five minus the time of the mongoose, okay? So we can say, instead of putting time of the walrus, we can put this. All we do is just move it over. So let's erase that time of the mongoose to that, forget it. And then we'll write five minus the time of the mongoose. There we go. Now look, we have T sub M here, T sub M there. That's all the variables we have. So we can solve this now. So let's just rewrite it. 40 times the time of the mongoose plus 60 times 5 is 300. 60 times a negative would be negative 60 times the mongoose, and that equals 260. Okay, well, 40 minus 60 is negative 20 times the mongoose. I'm moving this over here. 260 minus 300 is negative 40. So negative 20 to negative 40 just goes two times. So in this equation, the mongoose, you know, traveled for two hours. That's it.
Now, they're, they're, they're gonna ask us to solve for everything now. So let's go, well, we already know the rate of the mongoose, the rate of the walrus. All we don't know is the time of the mongoose and the time of the walrus. Well, we know now, right? The time of the mongoose is two. Well, two plus time of the walrus is five, so that means the walrus must have been traveling for three hours. That makes me ill to think about a walrus traveling, waddling down some lonely highway for three hours. Poor walrus. We don't think about them as much as we should. Walruses and their problems. Anyway, okay. Well, the method is, look at this big one. Take the big one. Stick as much as you can into the, you know, the slots. If you got an equation where it doesn't quite work, turn one of these into some kind of an equation where it has the same variable. That's all you want is a system with just one variable. Okay, the last thing we're doing is a little geometry here. Find x and y. Well, <clears throat> what should we do? What's an equation we could write? What do we know about those parallel lines? What do they create? Equal sections, right? Okay, so you tell me what is 5x minus 10y the same value as? What's the value of that? It's the top right of this chunk right here. And the top right of this chunk is 50, right? So we can write an equation that's like this. 5x minus 10y is equal to 50, correct? Since that's they're both the top right, okay? Well, here's another thing then. We need another equation, 7x minus 2y. What is that equal to? If this is 50 degrees right here, what does this have to be right there? It's 180 minus 50, right? Or 130. Boom, there you go. Okay, I won't bother to solve that, but you know how to do that. You can either use substitution or elimination or however you want to handle it. It's totally fine. So anyway, okay, that's it. All right, let's try some practice problems here. Go ahead and... Uh, Give A a whirl, pause it, and come back. Okay, I mean, you know, this is N sub N plus N sub O is 60, then 5N sub N plus 10N sub O is 310. So you can use substitution or elimination, whatever you want to do. Um, I, you know, you could have multiplied this entire thing by 5 here and then eliminated the 5s. Or you could have multiplied by 10 and then eliminated the 10s, whatever you want to do. Or we could just use substitution. It doesn't matter. you probably do it different than I would. But let me take the top equation and I'll solve for n sub n. That's going to be 60 minus n sub o. All right? Since that's the same thing as n sub n, I'm going to plop this down here and go 5 times n sub n is that. 60 minus n sub o plus 10 times n sub o equals 310. So 5 times 60 and then 5 times n sub o plus 10 n sub o. There we go. That's going to be a 5 n sub o. And then that gets over there. 310 minus 300 is 10. So n sub o is 2. If n sub o is 2, then, well, you know, that's a piece of cake. Then n sub uh, o is 2, so n sub n plus 2 is 60. So that means n sub n is 58. There we go. Almost to it. Okay, go ahead and uh, try B, pause it, and give it a whirl. All right, well, let's take a look here. And I'll just use a different color here real quick. Okay. Well, again, we're going to use this big equation and just, just slop this stuff into it as much as we can to figure it out. So R sub M is 50. So that will replace this with a 50. At first, I'll just put T sub M right now. Okay. All right. And then plus R sub W is 70. All right. Now, I don't want to put a T sub W here, right? Because if I do that, I'm going to have a T sub M and a T sub W. I, you can't solve an equation with two different variables. I mean, you need two equations. We ain't got it. Okay? So T sub W, I'm going to have to solve for. So let's take this and go, okay, T sub W, I'm going to isolate. And this goes over here. So T sub W is equal to 5 minus T sub M. 
All right, so I'm going to put that in parentheses. 5 minus t sub n. That equals 380. All right, well, look at there. I've got t sub n, t sub m, now I can solve it. Okay, so 50 times t sub n plus 70 times 5, well, 7 times 5 is 35, so 350, minus 70 times t sub n equals 380. All right, I got a negative 70 and a positive 50. That's a negative 20 t sub n. I got a uh, good gravy. 350 over here, that's going to give me a 30. Did I copy that down right? If I ever don't copy something down right, yell at me. I probably won't hear you at all, but at least we can try. Okay, well, I think I did. All right, well, anyway, we're just going to divide by negative 20, divide by negative 20. So t sub m is equal to negative 3 halves. All right. If t sub m is ne equal to negative 3 halves, that's negative 1 and a half. Then uh, t sub w is equal to 5 minus a negative 3 halves. Well, that's going to be a 10 halves, we'll call it. Minus negative 3 halves, that'll be 13 halves. There we go. Weird answer. Okay. All right. Let's try c. Go ahead and pause it and try c. All right, this is kind of funky, right? Okay, first thing I would look at as I'd go, look at that 20x plus 5y. Well, that's a vertical angle to 110 degrees. So that's telling me 20x plus 5y equals 110. Okay, that's another one. Good, all right. So let's see another equation here. Let's see, what can we do here? Um, That's fine. Let's just do this. This is 40 degrees right here. If that's 40 degrees, because that's 40 degrees, then we need 2x plus 5y. Let's just go ahead and write that. 2x plus 5y as well. That's going to equal this one right here, right? Well, this is, you can tell, this is a straight from here to here is 180 degrees. Well, out of that, we have taken care of a 40 and then 110. That's 150. So left over, that's 30 degrees. So our new equation becomes that. Okay, took a little bit of thinking there. All right, well, you have two equations now in blue here. So probably the easiest thing to do at this point would be to eliminate, because look, five y's, you can just subtract right down. So let's go ahead and just subtract all the way across here. So you, there we go. And this is nasty looking. 18x, is that what we got there? Uh -huh. That's gonna be 80? It's a horrible answer. 80 over 18, you got to be kidding me. That's 40 over 9. That stinks. Okay. I'm going to pause it real quick. Okay, good gravy. That is the right answer. Okay. I hope it, they, they won't do this to you too often. That's kind of crazy. Okay, so X is 40 over 9. Good gravy in the morning. Excuse my language. Okay, well, let's just take this equation out and I'll... 2x plus 5y is equal to 30. So 2x plus 5y equals 30. Great. So 2 times x would be 80 over 9. Plus 5y is equal to 30. Come on. So 5y is equal to something minus 80 over 9. Well, that's going to, let's see, 30 as a something over 9 would be 270 over 9. So 270 over 9 minus 80 over 9 is 190 over 9. That stinks. Okay, anyway, that's a heck of a long, weird problem. They won't do that to you most of the time, though. So anyway. All right, you all have a great day. We'll see you next time.